so hey there everyone this is a macbook air 2017 and the processor inside this macbook air 2017 is running way too hot and i have a few programs running up front so first up we have cinebench that i will be using to stress the cpu and i have this max fan control program that i will be using to monitor the cpu temperature and i'm also going to use this software to max out the fan speed because what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to run Cinebench in its stock configuration in the state it is right now and then later in the video I'm going to disassemble this laptop computer and I'm going to replace the stock thermal interface material and in my case I will be using the Thermal Grizzlies Cryonaut what I'm going to do right now is going to turn the fans to their maximum setting which is 6500 rpm in this case and as soon as I press ok you are going to hear the fan because it is going to be loud so as you can hear the fans are running at 6500 rpm the reason why I'm doing this is uh, if I'm not going to turn the fan to their maximum state the fan is going to fluctuate in its RPM in that way we are not going to get the exact temperature reading before and after so as you can see the fans are running at 64 6500 RPM right now I'm going to hit start on the multi-core test and we are going to have a look at the temperatures here so right away you can see the temperature has started ramping up 73, 72, 74, 73 and the Cinebench is already running so the test is on right now we are going to keep an eye on the temperatures here as of now the temperatures look just fine anything un under 80 C is fine but uh, it is slowly getting up we are getting in the 85 territory 85 85 on both the cores so I am going to let this test complete and then I am going to disassemble the back of this machine I am going to open the two screws that are holding the heatsink together will replace the stock thermal interface material with the premium interface material that I have got and as I already mentioned the thermal grizzlies cry or not so at this point we are running the test it is taking quite a while to complete this test because we are having just two physical cores four threads this is not a very fast computer a really slow CPU inside this so it is taking quite a while to complete this test and as you can clearly see here we have 97 C on the first core and 96 C 95 C fluctuating all the time and the highest that I've seen here is 99C so this is a really hot machine and the thermal paste inside this computer is not doing a good job we are running at a 6500 rpm and even then the cores inside this CPU are getting as hot as 98 and 96C which is way too hot for regular use so I'm going to wait and we'll let this test complete once it gets completed I'm going to disassemble this computer and we are obviously going to replace the thermal interface material in this thing so finally the test has completed and we have a score here the score is 1715 points which is uh, I guess quite low so now we are going to shut everything down and uh, I'm going to just disassemble the back of this computer and we'll try to replace the thermal interface material so at this point we are all set and it's time to flip the machine over and get all these screws off and in that way we are going to access the heatsink that is over the cpu these are all pentalope p5 screws so you will need to have a pentalope p5 screwdriver in order to get into this machine without that it won't be possible fortunately I have this iFixit kit so like this I'm going to unscrew all these a I guess one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten ten screws 
and I'm going to get back. So finally I have all the screws off and now I'm going to just get this back cover off and we are exposing ourselves to the laptop internals. So as far as the back cover is concerned we have quite some dust here. I'm going to clean this off obviously and this is the MacBook Air 2017 motherboard. It is only this big. The rest of the portion of this laptop computer is covered by batteries so you can clearly see there are four different compartments. Now what I'm going to do is we'll just clean everything up and then I'm going to open one, two, three, four screws here and I guess I'll need to remove a few screws here and there too to just get an access to this heatsink and beneath this we have the very poor thermal interface material that has been there for the last four years and we'll replace it with the Thermal Grizzlies Cryonaut so we'll be back once I end up cleaning the machine so I realized that we need another bit which is not the Pentelo P5 that we were using previously now this is I guess uh, Tox T6 or maybe Tox T5 I don't know I took it from here I'm going to mention it in the video so yeah now I'm going to just remove these four screws and then we are going to access the heatsink just make sure you put enough pressure before turning the screwdriver as this reduces the chances of just skipping the screw all together and I'm making sure to keep all the screws separately so you can see the screws from the back are here the two long screws are in all together a different compartment and these two screws are also kept separate so make sure you are doing the exact same so now I think we should be having the access to the heatsink itself and I can see I think there is one more screw that we will need to remove before we can move this heatsink off so I think this is it should be this screw or maybe the screw beneath it I don't know yeah there is some screw that is left so finally I ended up removing the small heat sink camera is having a hard time focusing so finally this is the little heat sink that is pulling all the heat of this CPU and this iGPU that we have here so you can clearly see the thermal paste is all dried up and that is why we were seeing really high temperatures yeah this is totally dry there is nothing and probably the worst thing I noticed is there was no thermal interface material on this little chip on this little die you can clearly see there is no thermal interface material I mean neither on the die nor on the heatsink so this is really poor stuff from Apple I never expected this so now what I'm going to do is just clean both these surfaces off and we'll apply some fresh thermal interface material and we'll seal everything back up so to clean this thing I am going to be using some isopropyl alcohol this is not water this is isopropyl alcohol and I will suggest everyone to use this you need to make sure that everything is nice and clean you don't want to leave any sort of old residues on these small heat sinks so both these surfaces are nice and clean 
I would suggest you to have a look at a disassembly video before attempting to repair this because this is not entirely a guide on how to disassemble everything. I know you must have got an idea by watching this video but if you are not sure about how to open this machine up, I will surely suggest you to just have a look at a disassembly video first. So we have cleaned both the surfaces at this point. I am going to make sure that both the surfaces are absolutely clean and now we are going to apply some high quality thermal interface material. You can use probably any thermal interface material but uh, if you are doing all this then you should use a really good thermal interface material because you would want to extract the most you can out of this and if you are not using a good compound then surely you are not going to get the results this much should be sufficient and I have a little bit off the chip too so I guess I'll have to make sure that I get it on so yeah I guess this is just fine It is totally fine if you have used a little bit more but uh, less can be an issue. All the excessive is going to get spread out so that is not going to be a problem. Now I am going to put the heat sink back on. And before I put the screws there is one little screw that I have unscrewed from this part of the heatsink. I am going to make sure to include this first and then we'll screw the other four screws. So yeah, the screw is in and all that is left from here is to just put the four screws that were holding the heatsink itself and that should be enough to apply some even pressure on the CPU and the GPU die. So finally we are back and uh, we have the computer running, no issues and I have did the exact same thing that we did previously we have the fans running at 6500 rpm basically the maximum fan speed that this computer could run at and you can see clearly we have a temperature drop even at the idle setting we are having a cpu temperature of 40 and 39 it is obviously fluctuating but previously it was over 50 now we are just under 40 so now it's time for the multi-core run I am going to start the test and we are going to keep an eye on the CPU temperatures right here. So the test has started. The temperatures are going up. And I will need to minimize this in order to see the test. As for the temperatures, we are at 75 and 75 right now. This is looking pretty decent so far. So the test is about to complete and you can see we have some temperature results 85, 84, 86. I haven't seen it go anywhere over 86. 86 was the maximum temperature that I saw. It is constantly fluctuating between 85 and 86 at the moment and the test is about to complete. Previously the maximum that I saw was 98-97C. So there is clearly a big difference and the thing that we want to note here is the multi-core score. 
if we are getting multi core score which is higher than 1715 then surely we have avoided thermal throttling uh, but unfortunately we cannot see a higher score here Cinebench R23 is a really stressful program I think this has throttled the CPU even at 86C but nonetheless we have a big temperature drop this machine is now in a really good state so I think uh, this should last and this should perform better than before we have a total temperature drop of 12C which is quite substantial so this is it for this video I hope you enjoyed it I hope you learned something new and if you are new here then please make sure to subscribe to the channel like the video and I will talk to you in the next one